Hello, I'm Yuzu Hu from the Experimental High School attached to UESTC. Optical fiber has a great impact on modern communication. So, how did the optical fiber system actually operate today? The optical fiber system mainly consists of third parts: the transmitter to create and send the optical signal, the fiber to bring it, and the receiver to receive it. In optical fiber communication, we use uh, amplitude shaped keying. Traditionally, use an optical pulse as one and use no pulse as zero. To give you a simple example, if the receiver checks whether or not there is an optical pulse several seconds, the first second yes, second no, third yes. Here we get the information one zero one. The way. To send information for optical communication is similar to electronic one, but there seems to be a big difference in speed. In 2004, Bell Labs is a new record for internet over copper by text named Actually Fast. Actually Fast delivers 10 GB per second connection speeds over short copper pairs. This great achievement seems to tap the full potential of copper cable. So what about optical fiber? The optical fiber system is even much more faster than this and valuable for longer distance. At 2012 FIO meeting, an inside and calling demonstrate it's 1.05 peps per second transmission over 3 kilometers of the fiber. Why its capacity for carrying information is so great? Here I'd like to show a serum called Shannon Hatterley Serum, which illustrates the relationship among capacity bandwidth and signal to voice ratio. First, the laser has a great bandwidth. The bandwidth here refers to the difference between the upper and lower frequencies. When sending information down a copper cable, the frequency may go from 100 to 900 megahertz as a bandwidth of 800 megahertz, and when sending information down optical fiber, the frequency may go from 133 to 158 terahertz. That's a bandwidth of 25 terahertz. Also, because of the strong anti interference ability of optical fiber for noise and electronic mag magnetic field, its signal to noise ratio is higher. According to Shannon Hatterley theorem, the larger bandwidth and the high ratio is the reason why optical fiber system capacity for carrying information is so great. Today, a technology for developing the speed of optical fiber system is widely used. Its name is WDM. Without WDM, people usually use TDM information transition. It works like this. The information needs to form a line and goes one by one. It's quite less efficient. And with WDM, it works like this. Much more better. The principle of WDM, like its name, is used different wavelengths of laser at the same time. This is optical fiber system with WDM, a more specific picture of today's system. OTU refers to optical transform unit. It transforms the input along standard optical signal to standard light wavelengths. Then it comes to OM, the optical multiplexer. It is used to put the cars on the right lines. And along the way, there are some cameras to check the situation of cars. They are called OSC. The station is surely needed. The optical amp flare enlarges again the power. Then they passed by BOD, divided into different lines. Finally, they touch OTU and change back to original signal. Researchers are continuing to develop these devices to solve the problems faced when using WDM, dispersion, STN, and long linear optical effects. There are also some other approaches to improve the capacity, uh, the multicore fiber, of course. That is what an easy and calling used. But I also want to introduce a quite different one, the photonic crystal fiber. As we all know, the light runs slower in glass. But according to Shannon Hattery theorem, the speed of light seems to unable to change the speed of transmission. It's right, but not completely. While light speeds can directly change its latency, and the latency could influence the capacity. For example, the influence created by latency of ACK in TCP. The sender won't open the sending window before receiving the ACK if the sender's window size is 64 KB, assuming that the ACK response time is 1 MS. So in this link, the actual bandwidth is about 500 Mbps. That is to say, if in this case, even with 1 GBps, then towards the speed could not touch 1 GBps. However, in the WAN environment, the delay of ASIC is hardly less than 50 MS. So in applications, especially for high-speed network, LTD is very important for the actual usage of the link. However, the problem of density is not important in most situations today, as uh, speed demands is still not too high. And although it claims that achieving the downbound value of loss of bandwidth and low latency, the loss of bandwidth are still worse than traditional one. Besides, it's too expensive. So it is more expected to use uh, 
in area like supercomputer, financial trading, and cloud computing today. But I believe that as the medial tech is continuing to develop, the demands of fragile bandwidth will never disappear. The future world should be a highly informationalized one, and all of those innovations will lead us to such a great world.